Hello. Okay, let's get started. Sorry for the delay. Okay, let's have a look of the lab and the project. Today we just have a look of how to do the lab A and we will talk about the project, like how to do and what we need to submit. And I will also answer your question related to the lab or the project. So let me know if you have any doubt. For the lab A, uh, because we switch our lab nine into our lab eight, so just use that. Let me open the lab eight. Sorry. So this week we do this, this one, the lab nine switch to lab eight. Basically what we need to do is to observe the RSS patterns with different gestures. So in here we need to design two different hand gestures the hand gesture should have the same duration, for example, two seconds. And you need to observe the unique impact on RSS. So how to uh, do the observation? So you may need to open your Wireshark or the network monitor to do this. Maybe you can like uh, have step like have several recording of your packet for your different gesture. And we expect you to have like fifty to hundred packets per second, and they should be in the regular intervals. And then you can plot the ISS graph like we did in the lab three. So this one is pretty simple. Uh, we want you to do this one before you do the project. So you can like have a taste of our project and know what we need to do in the next step. So before you do the labs, you can have a look of the YGES paper. There you will have more like understanding about that. So this one should be pretty easy for you because we have already know how to collect the RSS data. All you need to do is just that try is two okay. different hand gesture. Does this make sense? So this is the basic step. Just design the two different gesture and try to increase the packet rate to 50 to 100, from 50 to 100, and then plot the pattern. And that's all. And you may have some trouble on capturing the packet. Like you have no idea how to increase the packet rate, or you cannot increase the packet rate because once you open the monitor mode, you just have been disconnected from the Wi-Fi. We will discuss it later, but for now, you just you know, try your best to capture as much as you packet as, as you can. And how to have the regular intervals? Uh, for the beacon, pack, beacon frames, uh, the default value should be like around 100, microsecond so it's already have the regular intervals and if you want to create a like 
regular intervals for your ICMP package, which is pin package, then you can set the intervals at, at a fixed value. So it shouldn't be a problem for you. And because our like our devices is not pretty precise, it's our for our personal use. So you don't, you don't need to worry about too much about the precision. If you have like uh, 100 microsecond and 130 microsecond, that should be we can consider it, it is the same. So uh, yeah, do you have any tips on making the intervals regular? It is diff difficult to make the ping frequency to be higher than 15 per second on Windows 10. Yeah, that's pretty normal. So you may have some trouble to uh, make the intervals remain the same. I mean, in a very high accuracy, but you can like, apply a filter to delete unnecessary packets or you can uh, I think that that's all you need to do just re reduce the intervals so actually we don't need that much from 50 to 100 packets per second just try your best so basically the lab the lab A is just a simple version of the project. So all you need to do is just try it and make it work. I wonder if hand gestures don't seem to have any effects on RSS. Yeah, we will. Uh, maybe we can skip to there. Um, yeah, yeah. Cannot capture and it except the begin package. Oh, sorry, I didn't have this question here. But if you file your RSS, uh, RSS value remain the same, no matter what you did, maybe you should have a try to use a pot to cover on your receiver. Do you know what I mean? We want, uh, I want you to put a metal in the middle or you can cover it with your uh, receiver. Then you can observe the difference to make sure the RSS value is working. I think I have already put this problem into the GitHub. Yeah. Uh, oh no, I didn't. Sorry. Yeah, the first thing is you need to make sure your ISS value is like working now because we want to make it work. But if it's not working, maybe you should try another laptop or another network interface. But don't worry too much about that. That should be not a huge problem. Um, Uh, in 10 seconds, sometimes I can get 70 packets and sometimes 100 packets. Is there any way to deal with it? Um, yeah, there are two ways you can deal with it. But the first one is you can uh, do the padding. Like you can add some packets, add some value by calculating the mean value or no matter how you did. Like, manually add some packets inside inside the interval. And you can also delete some packets. But for the lab A, you don't need to do this. You can just roughly have that one and then you can use it. But for your project, then you can like do the padding stuff or you can delete some stuff. 
Uh, you can also use your, your, your own idea. Doesn't really matter. So for the, uh, it's here, I think. I didn't finish it, sorry about that. Just to, basically if the ISS value remain the same, you should just put a metal stuff between it and see how it goes to make sure the ISS value is working now. If it's working, uh, then you can like, uh, you can handle a, a stuff on your hand, such as a pot or metal stuff, or a small one like uh, iron lead or something, and try your gesture. If it's not working, maybe you should switch to another laptop or switch to another hotspot. And let's go to the project. So if you have any question about the lab, just let me know. But I think this one should be pretty easy. And if you have already done all this lab, like you have five or six labs in full mark, then you, you, cannot, you can just ignore this one and do your project directly. Because we only consider maybe the best five or best six for your lab. So if you have already got a very good mark on your lab, you can just ignore this one. You don't need to make the submission. That's fine. But it's a very good start for your projects. So if you haven't started your project right now, you can just start from the lab and you, you will know what you need to do. Is that okay? And let's have a look of the projects For the project, what we need to do is to design three distinct hand gestures. So for these gestures, you should like make it uh, have the same length. Like you can uh, make it have two seconds length. And you should try lots of different gestures and see what is the best way to do the classification. And the most important part is the data collection because all your, uh, like all the stuff is based on the, the data you have collected. And you need to find an algorithm to do the project to do the classification of your project of your gesture, and that is all. Uh, machine learning is not mandatory, but um, if you can, uh, we recommend you to do this because this one make make you easy to do the classification with a very high accuracy. And I think that's all. There's some pretty material that you can have a look of it, find some idea. Or you can just use their method. And for the submission, we need to submit. Let's have a look of my PowerPoint. Uh, the first one is to design and gesture. So what should I do to design and gesture? Uh, the, there's there are lots of ways to do this. Uh, to design a gesture, you can like do the data collection as we did in the previous lab. Start the recording by click the 
like white wild shark or network monitor button. Do the recording like this, and then uh, just perform a gesture and stop it and see how it goes. You can then you can see uh, what is the RSS pattern looks like, and you can also do this time in real time. So how should I do that? Uh, I will do a demonstration here. with my Raspberry Pi. Oops, stuck. Uh, since it's dead. I don't know what happened. Maybe I, I can uh, do the demonstration later. Uh, basically, you can run a script on Linux or on Windows that shows the RSS pattern in the real time. That's pretty easy. You can use Python or use bash or any command that you're familiar with. Just search online to how to print the RSS value then just print it per like 10 times per second. Then you can perform the gesture and look how will the RSS pattern uh, will change over time. And the second part will be the data collection. Uh, just collect the data as we did in, in the previous lab, use the Wireshark or network monitor to make sure you get as much packets as you can. And you can also do the processing for your data, such as noise filtering. Uh, you can do your own research on this part. There are also ways to do the processing. And at last, you will also need to split the data into training and test data set. Like you can have 90% of your data to train or build your model offline. And you have 20 or 10% of the samples is used to test your, your model. Does that, does that make sense? Especially you are using the uh, machine learning. So make sure you are not using the whole data set to train your model, or you will have very high accuracy, but it is not true. So rem remember that if you are using the machine learning, then you, sh you should split your data into training and test data set. And you should not train your data with your test data set. Does that make sense? And how to design the gesture detection algorithm? The first thing is you can have your own idea. And if you have no idea how to do it, maybe you can have a look of the reading material that provided in the document, such as YGEST, WIDA, or anything you can find. Then you can use their model or their method or algorithm or code, whatever. And you can also find this kind of tools or library uh, in GitHub or in the internet. You can use anything you want in this project. So we are not required you to uh, build a like very perfect model or build a model by yourself. We just want you to uh, achieve this goal and with your own method. No matter you use a already exist well-known method or use your own idea, it doesn't really matter. And for the project marking distribution, you can see the most important thing is the video. So I think you should put like at least half, half of your time on your video because you have like a lot of points on that. So in the video, uh, basically you need to introduce all the stuff for a project, including the idea and how you, what is your gesture? You need to do the demonstration with your like camera or stuff or some stuff. 
or you can do the animation if you want. Uh, and you should also introduce the performance, like including the accuracy or other metrics you use to evaluate your method. And make sure your video is well organized. Okay, you can use a PowerPoint or something to make, make it very well organized. And that is very easy to understand what, what are you talking about. And of course, the data set is also very critical for your project because your whole project is basic. It is basically on your data set. Uh, the first one is data amount. So how can you get like enough data amount? I can tell you, I cannot tell you a very specific number of like how much gesture you need to collect. But you can prove it by yourself. So how to prove it? Like how much data should I need for my model? Like you can, for example, you have uh, 300 different gest different gest uh, maybe 300 samples for each gesture. And totally you have 900 gesture sample in your data set. Then you can train your model with like only 100 gesture per sam 100 sample per gesture. And let's have a look of the accuracy. And then you train your model with like 300 sample per gesture and see that compare the accuracy. And you should be able to draw a curve of your accuracy change to prove you, ha you have enough data amount. And for the data quality, which means you the, all the unnecessary columns and row should be dropped. Uh, for example, here. Something like this should be dropped. The length, the protocol, the destination and source, we can also drop it after we do the filtering. So basically what we need is the time and the signal strength value and other all the other all the stuff should be dropped. And there are some also have some row doesn't have any ISS value. So we should also drop it. So the make sure your data set is very clean and only necessary data is included and, and unnecessary data is deleted. And yeah, that's all. And for the code, the most important thing is the README, which means you need to teach us how to run your code, including what kind of, uh, what, uh, which language are you using and what kind of library are you using and which version of it. If you are using Python, you can simply use the freeze command in pip to generate the environment file. And if you can make the program like into a real world program that we can just double click it and run it, that will be excellent. But you don't need to do that since you don't, do not have a lot of time. Just teach us how to run it, that will be fine. Just make it work uh, and make sure your code can read your data set is that okay? Directly, so we do not need to do any other step to run your code. All we need to want is to run your code on the terminal, and we do not want to like do some processing of your data set at first and run the code. So you need to submit the data set that can run with your code directly. Okay, let's see if we have any questions here. If we do the machine learning, a complete gesture 50 package. For example, data set with 600 packets, 400 packets for chain and 200 packets for test. So there are four gestures, is it okay? or I need to capture more data. So if you are only use 
50 packets. So, so I'm considering you are doing it this way. In my mind, so you are using like a packet like this. So there are only 200 packets in this file and you have performed four gestures in this single file. And there are totally four gestures inside of this file. And you see, you use three, uh, like you use them to train your model. That is totally not enough because you have only three samples, right? Three or four samples in this file. So normally we will have at least like 50 samples for each gesture. And maybe you sh should need more than that. Yeah, but you can like prove by yourself, you can try the different sides of it. If you can prove you have enough data, that's fine. But if you have only like five samples per gesture, we can just consider it, it is not enough because it's too less. And what accuracy for detection will be considered high? Um, it really depends. So we will consider the average level for all the among all the students. So try your best to achieve a very high accuracy. But if you cannot get a very high accuracy, um, don't worry too much. You can have a look of the mark distribution here. For the accuracy stuff, it's only related to this one, the data volume accuracy here. And here, I think, performance here. So don't worry too much if you uh, didn't get a very high accuracy. The first thing is you may have higher accuracy than the average, but you think it's not enough. And the second thing is the, the not every mark is on the average or on the uh, like performance, sorry. You still have a lot of stuff to get the marks. Uh, after you've done the project, make sure you have read all the marking criteria. Maybe you should read the criteria before you do the video stuff. Make sure you have achieved everything. Does this make sense? Let's go to the submission part. Uh, today I have talked to the Mahab and asking if he can give us more time to do the project. And he said yes. So we will have an extra 72 hours extension for that. So don't like, don't feel very desperate for the project. We have more time to do it. So our new due time is this one. At the first day next week, so try your best to do your projects, especially for the video, because I know maybe the data and the data set, data sets and the coach, maybe it's very easy for you, but some students may have some trouble on making the video. So I think you can like finish your code in this week and you can have like three or four days to do the video next week. You can do a couple of version of it and send it to your friends and ask him if he can understand what are you doing and what should be improved. Just make sure your, your video is very easy to understand. So you can use the Zoom to do the recording since we have the size limit for our, record, for our video. I think it's uh, 100 megabits, right? Your, rec your video should have about 10 to 15 minutes, no more than 60 minutes. So 
use the Zoom to do the recording if you can. That, that is the most easy way to do the recording because the Zoom will help you to uh, like compress the video and you don't need to process the video anymore. You can also use something like OBS or others, uh, or even your mobile camera to do the recording, but you may need to compress the uh, video. And if you have very low accuracy, just don't panic. Just uh, show your efforts to us. So what does I what do I mean is uh, like you have you can have a very basic version at first, then you can show how did you improve your model or app or your algorithm to get a higher ac high accuracy of performance. So we can show uh, what, what kind of problem had you met, have you met and what kind of improvement had you did? Have you done, sorry. Uh, and the last one is to use the PPT to do the demonstration if you can, to design PowerPoint. Or you can uh, like do a long recording in the video and do some you can edit the recording to make it shorter. So I think that one should be the easiest way. But if you don't know how to do it, just use a Zoom meeting. And for the data sets, like I said before, only the useful data should be submitted to make sure you have a very clean and small size data set. Maybe small, not very small, but compared to the cap file, it should be small. And make sure you have uh, the original cap file until you get a mark of your project. Yeah, because sometimes we can consider, um, we may check your uh, original cap file. So you need to save your cap file in your computer and don't delete it. Our video is too big. Can we just submit it? Your YouTube link. Yes, you can do it. Uh, but I recommend you to upload the video through the Moodle. But if it's still too large, you can do the do it. But if you use the Zoom to do the recording, you should not have this problem. Uh, should I keep the IP of resource and destination? Uh, you don't need to do it. I'm just worried about the size of the limits, like because we have a limitation on the uploading size, especially for our raw data like this. So if we upload the source and destination, uh, I'm not sure it will be enough. Maybe it will be too large. You can try, but the source and destination is not necessary because you need to do the filter at first and we will believe you have already done this or you have some trouble on get a high accuracy. Next one. So you may have some trouble when you do the projects such as you have very low rates, like you can get only maybe five or 10 packets per second. Then what you need to do is to increase the traffic in your computer, like playing an online video game, do the streaming stuff and or run the ping command. And maybe you can also have some problem on the monitor mode. If you open the monitor mode, you will disconnect it from the Wi-Fi. So you cannot play any video or run the ping command. So what should you do? You can, the first recommendation is use another laptop. But if you don't have any other laptop or network interface, then you can use the beacon frames package directly. So which means you have only five to 10, I guess it's about nine packets per second since the default 
interval is 100 milliseconds. So all, uh, what can you do is to design a longer gesture. For example, you can have five seconds for a gesture. Now, normally we will have only like two or one second gesture if you have enough packets. But in this case, since you have less packets per second, then you should extend the duration of your gesture to make sure you have enough packets to describe it. And you can also change the uh, beacon intervals on your router or on your mobile phone if you can. You need to figure out by yourself. And when you can try like uh, use the beacon frames from different, uh, let's say different hotspots, you can create two hotspots or even three hotspots. And so you have like two or three times of beacon frames at the same time. So you will have se several sender to get the packets. That's all, that can also work. And we may have lots of files to join to one data set. So the time column may have the same data. Can we just ignore it? Since the RSS value is the important thing. Uh, so what I recommend you to do is maybe you can create different file uh, like this. Uh, for example, I can create a folder uh, let's call it a swipe. Let's do the swipe gesture here. And we can put lots of lots of single file into here. And in your code, you should, away, you should have a way to read all the stuff under this folder. So that I think that's the most easiest way that you can do. But you can also concat your file into a huge file. That's that, that, that is I think it's not a big problem. You can manage it like with an array or NumPy or other stuff. Like you, you have several array in the same file, in the JSON, JSON file. Like you, if you have 100 of gesture, then you have 100 of different array in the same file. So make sure your data is well organized. Um, if we use machine learning for detection, how much detail about the algorithm should be included in the video? Uh, if you if you want to use machine learning, um, you can mention it about what is this algorithm, what is the name of it, and what is the principle, the basic idea of it. For example, you use the decision tree, then you should introduce what is what are you using? And why did you choose the, this model? And, and did you compare to another model in machine learning? Uh, we, we are not required you to do the introduction of the machine learning stuff. Just tell us uh, which kind of model are you using? Yeah, so you don't need to waste your time on the general stuff because we can do our research by ourselves. So all we need to know is your own project. So we want to we want to know the details of how you do your project. Okay, and if you still have a very low accuracy after a lot of attempts, then we will have some flexibility that you can try. The first one is try to handle objects in your hand. So I recommend you to like put a metal, have some metal with your hand to do the gesture recording. Okay. And this way maybe can make it easy to help you to distinguish the difference for 
different gesture. But if you, but if you can do without the objects, they will be excellent. So if you have very low accuracy, you can try to handle the objects on your hand. And you can also try to extend the duration of your gesture, like I said in here. So if you have, if you can do your like algorithm without any object in your hand, and with a very short duration, let's say two seconds, and you still have a very high accuracy, I, then I think you will get a very high mark. But don't worry too much about the accuracy, okay? Just try your best. And you may still have some problem to run the pink man because we have already told you how to do the pink man in the previous lab. So I'm not going to discuss it with, with you now. If you still have any problem, just let me know and we can discuss. And you cannot capture any packets except the beacon frames. That is, we don't have any solution for that right now. So what we can do is just have a longer gesture, I guess, like I said before. And that's all I can say for our projects. So what do you think? If you have any doubt on the project or on the lab, just let me know. And see if I miss something, I think that's all. And for the lab, is it enough to show graph for one sample of each gesture? Or do we need to show multiple samples? Uh, if you can cl clearly show your outputs, one is enough. But if you did multiple samples, then that's also great. But one should be enough. And since we will have a extended due time because it's in Thursday, so we may consider to have some like session, help session for our projects next week. What do you think? If you think it's necessary, maybe we can set up some help session like on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday before, before this time. So you can come to the session if you have any question for your projects. Want to conquer all the files into one CSV file and make a target like 012 and then split into train and test data set. I also submit the folder with all files. Is it okay? Maybe I think it can make my goal more concise. Uh, yes, you can conquer all the files into one. Maybe CSV file is not very easy to load, I guess. So if you can, you can make it a JSON file. So you can easily read it and save it. And we can also easily understand uh, how many samples do you have. So if you put it in the in a CSV file, then you may have some trouble on indexing, right? Because they have the same time. Yeah, 
you may need to find a way to do the indexing stuff. So what I recommend, maybe you can do uh, uh, JSON stuff. So you don't need to worry about the indexing in get indexing anymore. You just put it in, put them into different array. But it depends on you. You can put it in the CS file anyway. Just make sure you, your code can easily run it. And if you do the concat, you don't need to submit your original one. Because uh, if you want to do the split, then you should be able to like split, split it with your code, or you should submit a split it data set. Depends on you. You can submit only one file that have all the stuff inside it, and you split it with your code. Or you can submit uh two different folder or file containing the training and testing data set just let us know what is your data structure Um, yeah, uh, I think I will close the PowerPoint since we don't need it. And uh, I will stop the share from now. So if you have any doubts, you can share your screen with me and discuss with me. I can, yeah, I will also st stop the recording so you can share your desktop.